In Buddhism, there would be two main schools, Mahayana Theravada. Uh, usually, uh, we would learn from books or from, uh, from different teachings that uh, whatever you find in, uh, as a Buddhist school, other, either it will be coming from Theravada or it will be coming from Mahayana. So understanding these two is a very good start. It will be very complicated to go through all of the schools in Buddhism. There are many. Uh, but as the two main schools, Theravada Mahayana, uh, Theravada allows full enlightenment and uh, freedom from rebirth attainable already in this very life. Mahayana suggests that this is not possible that in this life one may become enlightened, but they have to be born again and again and again anyway until all others are liberated or until the person becomes a Buddha. So that would be the Mahayana teaching. So basically, if I, if I can share my feeling, Mahayana prohibits, you know, to attain that what the Buddha dedicated uh, 45 years to, you know, like the Buddha dedicated 45 years to teach people to become free from rebirth and Mahayana says, no, nothing, you won't, <laughs> you know. So uh, there we find like a direct, very important contradiction between Theravada and Mahayana. Uh, Mahayana, however, has a lot of misunderstandings about Theravada, just like Theravada uh, monks have a lot of misunderstandings about Mahayana. Uh, and that, as always, as with all religious uh, misunderstandings, is caused by lack of debate, lack of um, uh, discussion. So uh, this, of course, is fault on both sides. Theravada monks do not organize discussions, religious discussions with Mahayana, and Mahayana do not organize religious discussions with Theravada. Uh, and there is no reason why not to organize, you know, like th I'm sure there would be no particular conflict or difficulty. No, there's no reason for this. Uh, so there are serious differences, but there are differences which are not there. You know, they're like monks think that there are differences which are not there. Like the Mahayana uh, Buddhists will think that Theravada do, don't understand what's the ultimate truth, but that's not true. Theravada understand the ultimate truth. And Theravada monks will happily explain how they understand the ultimate truth even deeper than Mahayana, which thinks that Theravada doesn't understand any ultimate truth at all. So this, of course, again, is caused by lack of discussion. You know, Mahayana monks don't discuss with Theravada monks. Theravada monks don't discuss with Mahayana monks. They just meet each other. Yeah, you don't understand it. The other one, yeah, you don't understand it. We know that, you know, and by... So um, then they can never come into, you know, some kind of common understanding. But I believe that discussions would help. I believe that if there were discussions, there would be a lot of interesting insights into the each other's uh, teachings. So everything that Mahayana teaches is based on the, t on the scriptures, on the ancient scriptures. Everything what Theravada teaches is based on the ancient scriptures. So uh, there are many, many common things. It's, it has the common root. Uh, but uh, this one thing uh, has uh, become a big difference. So in Mahayana, they think that if you become enlightened, you cannot get free from the five aggregates. You have to roll over again and again and again in the five aggregates from, uh, from existence to existence, or you will be stuck in one existence from which you will be sending holograms to this world to teach others. A hologram, of course, is my word for that. Uh, Theravada says that no, you can in attain full enlightenment and entirely stop all of this rolling over again and again and again. You can totally stop it, uproot it, absolutely seize all of greed, hatred, ignorance and all of another rebirth. The rationale from Mahayana is that if somebody is fully enlightened, then certainly they have c perfect compassion. And out of compassion, they would be able to break the law that for rebirth, craving is needed. 
And when that law is breaking, broken, they would be able to be born again without craving. And Theravada says, no, without craving, there is no rebirth. So that would be the root, you know, the root of the interpretations. So I totally understand why Mahayana believes this, you know, they have this great faith in the Buddha, you know, and in the Buddha's compassion. But Theravada uh, doesn't care about faith or belief or ideas or expectations or wants or desires or illusions. Theravada just says, the Buddha said this, it's true, that's it. So that's where we get Theravada, which is very strict to that, what the Buddha says and doesn't build on it. It just follows and attains. Mahayana, unfortunately, prohibits you to attain the enlightenment which the Buddha taught. So you basically need to make the Bodhisattva vow. You need to promise that you will not become enlightened in Mahayana. Bodhisattva vow means that you promise that you will not become enlightened without helping the beings to be happy. You know, but in Buddhism, in Theravada Buddhism, you can make the vow to become Buddha and you can also decide to become uh, enlightened this very life. So there is both of them are perfectly allowed, suggested, encouraged, praised. So Mahayana doesn't know that. Mahayana doesn't know that in Theravada there is encouragement to become Buddha. So they think that they are those who become Buddha and uh, Hinayana, the Theravada, Hinayana is what they, uh, what they blame, what they um, insult Theravada. Uh, Theravada, um, they believe that Theravada leads only to the self-enlightenment without helping anybody else. And that's not true. They don't know it, you know. Again, the discussion is missing. So if the discussion was there, the Theravada monks could easily say, yeah, you teach your students to become Buddhas, but in our teachings also our students are taught to become Buddhas. It's just that in your teachings the students don't have any other opportunity. In our teachings everybody can follow what they want. So it's possible to become fully enlightened this life. After being enlightened, after the enlightenment is attained, then uh, the ten perfections are complete, including loving-kindness, and because of loving kindness, the fully enlightened person is always willing to help those around him or her. So if the enlightened person uh, has opportunity to teach or to share the teachings, they share the teachings with anybody as much as possible. So it's not just that they become enlightened for themselves and then they just die. No, they become enlightened and if there is an opportunity, they share the teachings. That is another problem, which for me is my feeling uh, with Mahayana. That is that in Mahayana, because the persons are not allowed to become fully enlightened in such a way that they are not born anymore next life, they are not enlightened. So in Mahayana, it cannot happen that you would have their fully enlightened person who could share the path to be fully enlightened. And in Theravada, there are four levels of enlightenment. And f the first one uh, means that you can be reborn maximum seven more lives. So you can attain full enlightenment that very life, but you can attain its second life, the third life, fourth life, maximum of in within seven lives. You cannot live eight lives after the first level of enlightenment. After the second level of enlightenment, you can live maximum one more life. After the third level, you can live maximum one more life in a special kind of heaven. You can call it heaven. After the fourth level of enlightenment, you are not born anymore. This life is the last. Uh, so in uh, Mahayana, because you make the Bodhisattva vow and you want to become a Buddha, which involves hundreds of thousands or millions or billions of lives, there is no way to attain even the first level of enlightenment in the with the interpretation that Theravada gives. You know, so they may believe that they attain the first level of enlightenment, but they believe that uh, I cannot. Okay, so I need to share something. If you hug your knees, I cannot uh, uh, tell you anything about Dhamma. <laughs> Otherwise, every other position is fine. All right. So, 
in uh, Mahayana, if you attain even just the first level of enlightenment with the with the Theravada interpretation, then you have broken your Bodhisattva vow. So you are not allowed to attain even the first level of enlightenment because you are supposed to stay here long and long and long. In Theravada, it's not so. In Theravada, you can decide to be fully enlightened Buddha. Therefore, you, of course, do not aspire to attain even the first level of enlightenment. But you can also desire to attain the full level, the full enlightenment this very life. And with that, you can attain the first, second, third, fourth enlightenment, level of enlightenment. So, in Theravada, there is the choice. And uh, this, I think, is also a very important difference between Theravada and Mahayana.